Hello, hello. So this video clip is for absolute painting newbies. And it goes through some of the mechanics, the most basic mechanics of painting that beginners may have a little bit of hard time with. Some of the students in my online painting workshop get ready to start on their piece and then they struggle with not knowing how to actually start. And by how to start, I mean how to grab a brush and how often to dip it in water and how to glide the brush over the canvas and simple things like that that most of the experienced or somewhat experienced painters know, but the 100% newbie who has never painted before doesn't know these things. And there's no shame in that because all of us have to start from somewhere. So a bunch of my lovely students have sent me questions that cover these really simple first steps. And this is going to be a Q&A session where I will give you more detail on how to address these uh, beginner problems and how to get over that first hump of not knowing what to do. So here we go. I have my list of questions right here on this piece of paper. And the first one is, are you switching your brushes when you change color? No, I do not switch brushes when I change paint color. What I do instead is I rinse my brush really, really well. So let's say we have blue color in my brush. And I'm painting with blue. I'm just going to do it right here on my palette. I'm painting with blue. And suddenly I want to switch to a dark red. So what I do is I rinse my brush out and I wipe the excess paint on the paper towel like this. And then I dip my brush in red. And now the brush is clean enough to not leave any blue residue. So maybe here's a little bit of white. And here we have red instead of blue. Um, if you feel that there is a lot of paint residue remaining on the brush after you rinse it in your cup of water, you may just want to wash it out in the sink. Now, some artists use separate brushes for uh, cool tones and other brush for warm tones. Me, you know what? I have a hard time keeping track of these brushes anyway. I just, I just grab brushes as I paint and... and you know, when I'm using one brush, it's it's enough for me. So it's much easier for me personally to just rinse the brush when I switch between colors. Next question, are you dipping your brush in water between colors? So with the mechanics of my painting process, what I do is first, I wet my brush a little bit, wipe it down, then I dip it in paint. So it's dipped in paint. And now I have a little bit of paint on my brush. The brush is not too wet. And I go ahead and apply it to my canvas. And when I'm ready to clean this paint off my brush, I rinse the brush, wipe it on a paper towel, get the excess water off of it, and dip it into a new color or a slight variation or the same color. But basically, this is how my painting process goes. And, you know, once you start doing it, you get a feel for it and you'll understand um, how to moisten your brush. And, you know, you'll get a feel for what it means to have too much water on your brush or maybe not enough water on your brush. Uh, but like I said, there's no shame in not knowing this information in the beginning. So this is how I get started. Um, and also something I wanted to tell you is that I always use two water cups. So this is my rinsing cup. And the rinsing cup is filled all the way to the top. And obviously this is for rinsing my brush. 
And this cup, you know, it's pretty dirty, but I've used it for ages. Uh, this is my holding cup. And the holding cup only has this much water in it. And this is the cup in which I hold my brushes when they are not used. So the reason I have very little water in it is because if I hold my brushes for several hours in a cup, if I had a higher level of water in this cup, it would get into the wooden portion of the brush, right? So it would get into the wood, it would make the wood expand, it would destroy the sealant on the brush, and it would ruin my brushes a lot faster. The low level of water in the holding cup allows it to only touch the metal, so that way the brush doesn't get destroyed. So here, the metal, and so the metal is up to here. So that's how, how my water level is in this cup. Um, so that way I can hold my brushes in water and keep them wet when I'm not using them. Meanwhile, they're not getting ruined. And this is how I dip my brush in paint. I usually use a circular motion. And if I'm mixing it, I add a little bit of, let's say I'm mixing blue and white here. So I add a little bit of white and I use a circular motion because it gives me an even mix. And this way I can ensure that I don't have too much paint on my brush. So there's no excess. So it gives me a precise amount. Next up. Are you using multiple brushes throughout the first layer? That means the underpainting, when I cover my canvas with the first layer of uh, underpainting color. No, I do not use multiple brushes throughout the first layer of painting, which is usually underpainting. I cover my canvas with very large strokes and I only use a large sized brush for that portion of the painting because I want to do it really quickly and there's no need to get into the detail. So I usually use size 10 or size 12 brush and this brand is Pro White uh, Creative Mark. Um, this is my favorite brand. Uh, so yeah, and I just kind of cover my canvas with this, with these wide strokes with this brush and that's my first layer. Um, smaller brushes I used for later when I get into the detail of my piece. How long do you wait for the paint to dry between layers? So here's the answer. I would like for my paint to fully dry between each layer. And my method of painting is wet over dry, which means the previous layer is fully dry and when I apply the new layer of acrylic paint, um, it is obviously wet because it comes off my paintbrush, but it goes over the previously dried paint. That's just the preference of how I paint. It doesn't mean that every artist that paints with acrylics should use this method. Some artists actually prefer wet over wet, which means you don't wait for your previous layer to dry all the way. I find that with acrylics, because their drying time is so fast anyway, wet over wet doesn't work so well for me because when I start to blend paint directly on my canvas, um, it sort of starts the process of drying and the blending isn't very effective because it's not very smooth or even. So that's my painting style. I apply wet over dry um, and acrylic doesn't really take that long to dry. Uh, usually I don't even technically wait for my paint layers to fully dry. What I do is I just go ahead and work on a different area of the painting. So if I'm working on the sky and I have a wet layer in the sky, you know, I go to the bottom and work on something in the foreground. Meanwhile, the sky is drying. Then I go back to apply the next layer on the sky. So I just kind of work around all the areas of my painting. And that way I don't even have to wait for any of the layers to dry. Or sometimes I work on multiple pieces, you know. So if one of my pieces is wet and it's gonna dry in about 15 minutes or so, I just put it to the side and, you know, get another one on my easel and, work on that one for a little while. So it's pretty fast. Um, but if you want to explore wet over wet painting, you can certainly try that. 
and try uh, blending your paint directly on canvas and see how it plays out for you. Um, in the beginning, it's all about experimentation to see what you like best. All right, that was it for part one of Newbie Q&A session and part two is coming your way soon.